Okay, this is a hickory tree. Yeah. We're gonna get two bows out of this. Yeah. We're gonna split it, cut it, split it, take it back, and what we're gonna do with them. Well, my thought was we'd see how fast we can make a bow. Okay. How quick we can go from a green tree to uh, a really hard shooting bow. Yeah, not a, not a bow that shoots 100 feet per second. No, we're going to see if we can get it up around 170 plus feet per second with a 10 grain arrow and make a real bow. <laughs> You just cut this tree about what 30 minutes ago? Yep. You peeled the bark off of it and you reduced a lot of the wood off of it I to where it where it actually bends. It bends a little a bit. A little bit. And uh this is a very early spring, so you see some of the cambium still there. But we think this is gonna dry pretty fast. Well that was the purpose uh, of taking the wood off was try to get it see how fast we can make it dry right and we got it where it bends a little bit we didn't get it too thin but it is thin enough at this point that it could start taking propeller twist, twist with a yeah. fast and dry so we're going to clamp it to a form and we're going to put a little heat to it and we're going to see just how fast we can get this dried down to about a 10 percent moisture this ain't got nothing to do with primitive stone tools or this is just how fast you can make a bow today but of course I'm, I'm certain in past times there were plenty of people that had to make a bow very fast they well, had to it was for survival it was also documented in the chronicles that the natives here took advantage of the green wood right always to reduce the mass right. while it was green and I know splitting with wedges and uh, other techniques you can do that pretty quick you got to right. add three or four more hours right but that's it and you know Thad there's a lot of things on YouTube of different places about making a survival bow right we're right. not trying to make a survival bow we're trying to see how fast we can go and make a really first class bow just like anybody would make a first class uh, uh, hunting bow right but how fast we can do it now uh, you know Thad we just uh, got this form here this, this piece of wood already had a propeller twist in it. It was, it was in the tree. Mm -hmm. And so we clamped that out of it. We clamped a little reflex in it. And in about two minutes, we're gonna have this in the heat. But this tree was drinking water an hour ago. It was attached to roots less, yeah. less than an hour ago. Yeah, so this is and a sopping wet piece of wood. Within five minutes of now, we're gonna have it in the heat. In the heat, right. okay. And it'll, it'll be, uh, we're gonna, we don't have anything fancy set up. We just got a we tarp just, containing you know, heat. We just got from a tarp. A fire. We draped it over a rope. Yeah. We're gonna put a bucket of coals up under it. Right. Up under the stave, and we're just gonna let it hang. And, and we're let gonna it dry. see if we can't get it down to about ten percent within two two days. Right. Two, right. And it may be three, but we're yeah. gonna we're gonna go for two. Right. We're gonna try for two. Yeah. Okay. All right, man. Okay, we got the fire lit. Got a little oven there. And the bow's overhead, suspended. Well, she's closed up. We got a thermometer in her. 
and we're gonna see how hot it gets in there. Just like smoking meat, right? That's right. Keith, this is um, bow number two. The other half of the one we got smoking. Right. We're just gonna remove the bark off of it and take it a little slower with this one. And just get it out the wind and sun and let the moisture kind of release a little slower. But yeah, still. Probably for two or three days. Two or three days. But and still the goal is to try to have a bow in a week. In a week. That's right. And we'll see if this technique or the smoking technique, if there's any difference, you well, know. We'll know. We'll know. We'll know. But, but we just let this one kind of air dry. For a day or two. For a day or two to neutralize the moisture a bit mm -hmm. and taking the bark off. We're going to reduce it down to bow form. As thin as we can fairly, get it. Fairly close. We're going to clamp it. Yeah. Okay. And then we just sit it and let it kind of um, lose the moisture gradually. Mm -hmm. For a couple of days. But still with the end goal to have a real bow in a week. Okay. Not a survival bow. A real bow. Real bow. bow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. you see a lot of these survival bows, and it, I don't know what speed they're shooting, but it don't look like they're shooting very fast. And not that speed is everything, but I don't want to shoot at a deer with a bow that shoots 100 feet per second. That's right. You, nobody does. And we're talking about making a real hunting bow. A real hunting bow, and just how fast we can do it. Now, this a little bit slower method, but we've got a bow over there smoking that was a living tree an hour and a half ago, right? That's right, and we've got heat on it. We got heat on it and it's drying. This one's just gonna sit to the side a couple of days and then we'll take it a little further. Right. All right. It's 100 degrees in this tent right now. It's about 55 degrees outside. Yeah, uh, it's about 100 100 degrees thereabouts. It was about it was about 120 when I first looked at it. Yeah. There's the bow hanging. Back up a little bit. That's it. That's all I can do. Okay. That's the bow hanging inside of there, and it was green, living tree just hours ago. So okay, that's good. That's that's, yeah, that's, that's, good. that's good. That's enough to start driving moisture out. That's right. And about four, almost exactly 48 hours ago, you know, we cut this tree. Uh, it was a living tree attached to roots. And this is the two staves you got out that one tree. Right. Well, you know, we split it in half. Mm -hmm. And what we did, if you remember, we. We worked it down to somewhat of a slightly bending blank. Slight, very slightly, yeah. Right. One of them we just clamped into this form mm -hmm. and put it in a shed to start drying. Right. This one, you know, we put it in our artificial heat tent. Yeah. And we subjected it to about between 100 and 120 degrees on average. And, of course, you can see some pretty major color differences beginning to happen well the the artificial tent that we used was basically a tarp over a rope and we had um, a heat source in the bottom with just coal sitting in a concrete bowl that's right and it was suspended about five feet four feet over the flames right. and we enclosed it we enclosed it so it kind of held that heat to what temperature did it hold between 100 and 120 on average. 100 and 120. Right. Um, now, of course, at night when we weren't uh, overnight, it would drop down to 60 right. degrees. And yeah, because the nights would be getting fairly that's cool. That's right. So there was periods of times during the night there, the heat source went out on it, and we right. would you know, right. light it back up that morning. Yeah. But, you know, the most important thing is what's happened to this wood in 48 hours. And we got this moisture meter here. Go ahead. And in this raw piece right here. Uh, the meter's pegged out. The meter's pegged out. And what is it? What's the top number there? Uh, no, no, no. 30? 25. 25? 25. 
Now it's maxed okay. out. We don't know what it really is. That's right. Uh, but the thing of it is, this piece that's been in the tent, right here is read, it's reading six. And we don't know how low it really is because that's as low as it'll go. Right. Now, this has also been clamped into a form. Right. And I'm not expecting this wood to be six all the way through because no. the back has is, is been uh, up against, up against form. this yeah. form. Mm -hmm. But, you know, here not too long ago, we took it out the form briefly and I put the moisture meter to it and it was a lot of places on the back was in the 10 to 13 range. Right. right. But this is pegged out at 25 on the belly. Right. You and know of course, what, this yeah. back here would be wetter too. Wetter. Actually, much uh, wetter, yeah. So... Uh, what we're trying to show here is actually what can happen in as little as 48 hours subjecting this wood to a, uh, a light heat source, getting it thinned down, and putting and, just a little bit of heat to it. And this is our local hickory. This is local hickory. And uh, everybody pretty much on the east coast, uh, well, east of the Mississippi, has got access to this wood. Right. And... There's now, no, we don't know what to do with any other species right now. This is no, this no. is all we've We're done. We're just experimenting with hickory, and there's no cracks in it. But, you know, some other species of wood, it may crack horribly when you do Doing this. It, we don't it. know, though. We, we don't really yeah. know. But, but what we do know is hickory makes a superb bow. Right. And if you can do this with hickory and get and not get any bad effects out of it, then you know we can make a superb bow out of it and so what we're going to do here in just a bit we're going to put this on the pit and we're going to fire harden it and we're going to let it rehydrate overnight well i mean point at this point in time we went from a living tree to a boat that's ready to tiller in 48 hours keith i've and, seen a lot of guys making so-called survival bows out of little saplings and you see them make a bow and they'll string it up and shoot it and it looks kind of wimpy and it is i mean it would kill probably small game sure but this is going to be a first class deer hunting weapon oh yeah and tomorrow we're going to tiller this bow and have a shooting bow we're not just going to have a shooting bow or a survival bow no we're going to have a bow that will probably compete with most fiberglass bows yeah any any high quality hunting bow out there in record-breaking time right that's amazing man i mean i wish i'd have knew this years ago but there's a lot i wish i'd have knew years ago well that's the purpose of doing this and some, right. some of these things and and just to see what is possible you, you know a lot of a lot of things we read, we, we, we've read about, you, you know, it's, it, they, it's uh, safe ways to do things. Right. But that, right. a safe way is not what's possible. Oh, right. That is this piece of wood, which is pegging out this moisture meter. Right. This one here is substantially dry and ready to be fire hardened. And so I think we ought to get at it. We ought to stoke the coals and put this thing on the pit let's, and let's fire put it on it. The pit and make a bow out of it. And uh, and we'll be under three days. That's right. Yeah. All righty. All right, let's you do ready? it. Yeah, man. been drying it and at this point we've in the process of starting to fire harden it and within two hours it should be fully fire hardened and ready to tiller and if you'll notice here we left the cambium on this piece of hickory after uh, while we were drying it and fire hardening it and we're getting ready to remove the cambium before we start tillering it but as of right now this bow is ready to tiller
good. Mm -hmm. Pretty good, it? It's pretty balanced at this point. Same here. Yeah, that looks, looks good. Beautiful. Looks looks Real pretty good. good right now. We're just gonna pull it to 20 inches. That's where we got it tillered to right yeah. now, and just shoot it a few times and just let it shoot. Just get the limbs used to working a little bit. That's all we're doing. I've got my arrow marked right here where 20 inches is, so I know right where to pull it to. Right now it's perfectly tilted at 20, uh, 20 inches and we just shot it a few minutes, a few times and uh, we're going to go ahead and finish tilting it out to 25 inches which is our draw length and uh, at that point she's done. Okay. Just shooting it a little bit at 23 inch draw just to work the limbs a little bit before we put the final tiller on it. Okay, well, but what I'd like to do is show you the reflex this bow holds. And just, I'm gonna loosen the string, and, and you see, it, it doesn't ease back. <laughs> it jumps back. What we've got here is our three-day bow. It pulls 46 at 28. I have a River Cane arrow here that's precisely 460 grains, which is 10 grains per pound of bow weight. We're going to shoot it here through the chronograph and see what we get. What is 166? 166.8. 163.1. Good. One sixty nine point five. Here. One sixty seven. I think we pretty much know it's in the upper one sixties. Yep. We have our, our three day bow. Uh, this went from a living tree to this finished bow in three days. And uh, we've just shot a 10 grain arrow through it a number of times. And looks like we're averaging in the upper 160s. We've got anywhere from uh, mid 160s to low 170s. So, uh, and this went from a living tree to a finished bow in three days. What's the poundage? The poundage is 46 pounds shooting a 460 grain arrow. How long is the bow? Uh, the bow is 64 inches, and we've been drawn to 28 inches. And the bow, the unstrung profile, it holds uh, about an inch and three quarter inch reflex. That's pretty fast, Keith, for 40, what, 46 or 47 pounds. Yeah, see, I pop the string off and it immediately goes back to a reflex on it. And we've been drawn to 28 inches. And uh, just shows what can be done uh, with a, some fire right? and the fire hardening method. And there is not a crack, there is not a flaw, there is not anything that uh, 
And actually, this is probably one of the worst pieces of wood I've ever worked with. It's got a lot of humps and bumps, and we ground through the... Turn the belly around. And, uh, yeah, you can see all the knots. And, and some of them out on the edge of the bow limb. Yeah, so this is a pretty imperfect piece of wood. And... Um, but it made a good bow. Made, I mean. it, made a good bow. And, uh, but in it, it's performing at the upper end of what you could expect from, right. a, from a, a, self a self bow. Yeah. You know, to think that this could be done in three days. It's is, amazing. It's amazing. This is not your survival bow. Right. This is a really high quality hunting, hunting tool bow, yes. that will pound for pound, arrow for arrow, will rival just about any Osage bow. Yep. That's but, all hunting weight string and everything. That's right, and there is no speed. Uh, there is no uh, sp speed design in this bow. This would be uh, a well built bow. Just a well built yeah. bow. No speed attributes built in it whatsoever. Yeah. You know, if we tapered the limbs out here a little bit further, we could probably tweak another five foot a second out of it. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, that's cool, man. But the performance is about as good as you get as we get with our fire dancer bows or you get get from an Osage or any really good well built hunting How hunting bow. How fast do you think we can make a bow from a living tree? We're going to shoot for 24 hours. One day. From living tree to far hard to bow. one of these in 24, 24 hours. hours. I feel pretty certain we can do it and uh, well, we're, I know, we're going to give it a shot. I know a lot of people said, well I did it in two weeks. Uh, there's a lot of different between three days and two weeks. Oh it really is. Yeah. But the point I want to make that this could not be done without the fire hardening. Right. I could not take a heat no. gun and do this. No. Um, and uh, there was a bit of a, a technique to doing this. Right. And uh, I think we showed most of it pretty well. Yeah. But we're gonna we're gonna kick that up a few notches and see if we can't do it in 24 hours. Okay.